Hey, Sens fans. Thanks for watching the Sensennial Podcast, a member of the Hockey Podcast Network. Today, we're doing a short video to discuss Tyler Clevin and his debut with the Ottawa Senators uh, since his arrival, how he's played and, and how he's performed out there. So uh, I'll kick it off with other Matt first and Tyler Clevin, new to the Ottawa Senators, sporting that number 43. What do you have, what have you thought about his game so far? He's a big failure. <laughs> Uh, honestly episode, like I, yeah that, that's it <laughs> that's a wrap <laughs> um i i'm pleasantly surprised by uh tyler clevin's game uh he's a he's actually a quite mobile defenseman um he is able to to read the play quite well i i found it hilarious his first shift he decided to silly uh, you know follow nick holden into the black and they double pinched on uh you know what you probably shouldn't do on your on your first shift and it led to a breakaway um and that was uh luckily one of cam talbot's few saves of the game um but uh, other than that uh, wait, wasn't wasn't that actually the one that went off both posts and out <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> i think the post Man. made more saves than talbot in that period yeah i think uh i think seven seven shots got past uh talbot that game and there were 11 total shots so yeah Oof. but clevin overall in the in the last three games i've been really impressed with him he's uh had a bit of a um a spinning revolving door of of d partners and he's been able to manage quite well he's played with the franchise and they've been they've been looking steady he's played with nick holden they've looked good uh, I want to say I even saw some looks of him with uh, him and Jake Sanderson, um, and he played with JBD as well. So a lot of different partners, and he he's managing quite well. Uh, I I've liked his game a lot. Like he's been really steady, and if he continues to do this, it's almost like leapfrogging anybody that's in the AHL and JBD to his credit has played uh, well uh, once, once he's been up uh, the last couple of games, but um, Lassie Thompson, I guess has just been lapped by Tyler Clevin in, in no time whatsoever. I know they're different uh, handedness shots, but even still that's pretty significant. Yeah, for sure. And I think what'll be interesting to see is this summer because uh, what happens to either Lassie Thompson or JBD because both of them are waiver exempt next season. So the Suns will have to make a decision on whether they're going to trade one of these guys, maybe at the draft, try and recruit uh, a pick or two um, and, and go for someone else in the draft who will have more, you know, team control and uh, be waiver eligible. Or if they're just going to go into the summer and then when training camp comes be like, listen, Whoever wins the spot wins the spot. The other guy will go to the AHL and they'll they'll risk putting them on waivers or whatever, right? Uh, but yeah, Bennett, uh, what did you think about Tyler Clevin's short stint so far? Well, I think Matt really hit the nail on the head when he said pleasantly surprised. I think that when he was drafted, people had some reservations, I think, about the, the style of player that he was described as. I think... Clevin was lumped in with the category of a bunch of other picks the Sens had been making around the same time of guys who are big physically, who come from the U.S. National Team Development Program, play college hockey. Like he's sort of one of those like real Sens picks. And I think at a time when people were starting to really wise up to that and question it, uh, we you know, the same kind of philosophy that led to some later reaches in in that same draft in 2020 as well as in the 2021 draft so i think that that did a part in uh suppressing expectations for him before he made the jump up but yeah he's looked pretty good honestly i think that you know most of his uh most of the the stats that don't cast him in a good light have come when he's been playing with uh on a line with nick holden and I know Everyday Sense on Twitter, uh, shout out to him, has been, you know, really on this. He's been a big uh, Clevin, you know, uh, defender and for good reason. I mean, most people are Clevin defenders. He's looked good and he's made, you know, gone to great effort to point out that most of what hasn't looked good has been really as a, a result of 
being on a pairing with Nick Holden as opposed to Clevin himself. Uh, that being said, you mentioned the Clevin and Brandstrom uh, pairing. I think that's such an interesting pairing because it's so much, like they provide so much to each other of what the other doesn't have, uh, which you it- want from a pairing sorry go yeah. ahead Matt. and and it's it's also really funny they are the absolute polar opposites of totally two, totally like uh, two spheres of Sen- sends twitter one yeah. is like this guy's big he skates he hits and stuff and yeah. then it's like this guy skates and moves the puck well and is small but he's a king yeah and like yeah they came together and everybody's just like shaking hands and they're <laughs> like right. we can agree on this pairing yeah well, I, I mean like they represent totally different like playing styles and philosophies yeah. and everything i mean like Calvin, you're you're north american you know physically strong stay at home defenseman guy brandstrom you're european smaller more mobile skill-based defenseman with an offense upside which we hadn't really seen any of this season until the last couple of weeks where he started to take off a little bit and i mean i think that you know if you think about running those guys as a potential third pairing or something next season then you know and your top four being you know sanderson zub shabbat and chikrin it's like all of a sudden that looks like a real nhl defense core and uh you know, uh, we really hope that when new ownership comes in, uh, they do uh, they they clear house and they allow for this to happen. Because I don't know if with our current you know hockey ops team, they would see that as a viable defensive core. But I think that it is, and I think that um, yeah, I think the club has been an asset asset since he's joined the team, and uh, I suspect he's not going to see a lot of AHL time in the near future. Hey, Sens fans, we know you're obviously a big fan of hockey, but are you also a big fan of basketball? Are you ready for the underdogs, the upsets, and the unbelievable action from DraftKings Sportsbook? The biggest tournament in college basketball is here, March Madness. Right now, new customers can just bet $5 on college troops and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, for a limited time, all customers can score a no-sweat bet during round one and two of the tournament. Go to the app, opt in, and place a no-sweat bet this weekend. If it doesn't hit, you'll get a bonus bet back up to $10. And we don't know if you're taking a 16th-ranked team or if you're going for number one, but you can get those bonus bets. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code THPN. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Win or lose, only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See our show notes for details. Thank you, Sens Army, and go Sens Go. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at Sensetennial or Instagram, Facebook at The Sensetennial. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll kick things off with touching on what Bennett was finishing off uh, the first half of the episode with. And that's, you know, the Clevin franchise pairing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if going forward, the sense resort to that uh, and going into the summer and to next season, obviously depends on what coaching staff is in place. Uh, but yeah, like I think that it really makes a guy like Travis Hamanick someone who you would sign to like a league minimum one year contract, maybe a bit more than that if he demands it. Uh, But he's, you know, he doesn't have the same foot speed uh, as he used to. And in the NHL these days, like you you need to have good foot speed really as a defenseman to make sure that you can keep up uh, while skating backwards and um, while the four checkers are coming in, right? Like you need to make sure you can keep up with the player and, and follow them in the play and box them out to the outside. Uh, and that's where we were talking about earlier of Ty- Tyler Clevin having quite good mobility for a bigger guy. And I think him with Brandstrom is is really like that weird match made in heaven. You know, you do have that big stay at home guy and then you have Brandstrom who can play on that right side and has more, you know, pace and uh, skill to his game than Tyler Clevin does. And I remember when Tyler Clevin was drafted in the second round by the Sens, I was like, oh, 
I don't know about him. You know, did they just draft him because he's roommates with Sanderson and they really want Sanderson to sign with the team when he's done in college or what? But uh, hey, so far through a few games, he's been uh, pretty decent. And I know, Matt, you were saying that obviously first shift wasn't a beautiful one, uh, him and Holden with the double pitch. But, uh, you know, they made it work. And uh, through a few games, Tyler Clevin is rocking that core Z4 of 58.6%, uh, which is lovely. Uh, you got to love that. Uh, and he's taken no penalties. So that's that's a big yeah, thing to know. Yeah, I, I thought he was going to get one, but it ended up going to Ridley Gregg, of course. Um, but also totally love that, uh, you know, Tyler Clevin is also an analytics darling, uh, seeing his, uh, his, uh, his hockey stat card. And he's right at the top of the chart, uh, right there with uh, Bilbo Brandstrom. Um, <laughs> just, just beautiful stuff, you know. Just exceptional. Yeah, yeah and it, he, it's really kind of funny that it's like this guy that you know two years ago was getting slagged off as just being you know like a big dumb stay at home guy who likes to throw hits. Uh, and another example of like failed sense scouting is now, like you say, becoming something of like an analytics darling, and it's like. Yeah, it's uh, I appreciate the irony. It's like going to an art museum and you know, with your pretentious art friend, and they're like, Oh, yeah, this is really good, I like this. And you're like, That's the fire escape plan. <laughs> I love that analogy, that's great. I was, um, I was fully expecting it to be like, This is IKEA wall art, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah, that's yeah, the that's points it. still yeah. stand, but it's yeah. it's beautiful, like. And it it's just a, a good indication that, you know, sometimes at the draft, draft people know a little more than uh, than the common common yeah. sense a Twitter person. And, yeah. And that's OK. I, uh, you know, I'll eat crow on the fact that uh, Clevin probably wouldn't be the pick that I made, but he he's playing in the NHL right now and he's playing well. So, yeah. Feed me that crow. Yeah, and even moving away from the the hockey stat cards analytics, you know, when you look at Tyler Clevin on uh, Michael Blake McCurdy's model on Hockey Viz, um, you know, his isolated impacts aren't like really great, but I mean, the sample size is really small. Uh, in the offensive zone, he's not generating a lot. In the defensive zone, he's been fine. But I think when he's on the ice, um, his his pairing and whatever lines he's playing on defensively are actually quite a bit better while he's on the ice. Uh, not maybe him himself helping it, but him with his line mates are making a good defensive unit when on the ice. And that's important. And uh, so just looking at the um, Ottawa's 5v5 offense chart, he's not really helping the offense, which is fine. Rookie, that's not his billing. It's all good. But yeah, with the five on five defense, uh, when Clevin is on the ice through about 50 minutes of what he's played at, at five on five, um, when this analytic model was captured, uh, Ottawa's expected goals against are at minus 27%. So that's quite good. Uh, and I was checking, I don't have it in front of me, but I was checking earlier and with Tyler Clevin not on the ice, Ottawa's five on five defense is like a plus 1%. So he is actually, when on the ice, whatever pairings he's on, they're making quite a difference on the ice and that's, that's great to see. So uh, hopefully you can yeah. continue forward that and yeah, you could have a really solid defensive guy and uh, throw him with Brandstrom and hopefully uh, have some magic happen. But uh, yeah, you guys have any other uh, thoughts you wanted to throw out there or. I, I just hope that this, uh, the emergence of Clevin uh, dampens the team's enthusiasm to bring Hamannick back on a or holding back either of those guys back on uh on league min deals or any kind of deal for next season I I just think that it would be a mistake we have so much good defensive talent that we don't need to waste roster spots on guys who like really shouldn't have an initial role at this point yeah, I I think that's absolutely fair, especially with a guy like JBD. And I'd really like to see Thompson get a look um, because guys like Hamannick and Holden have taken a significant step back. And I think the best thing you can do for a defense core uh, going forward is moving on from DJ and uh, getting a coach who who really knows how to put in place a defensive system. 
and to tune into our next episode for more talk about that. Shameless, what a segue. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for, for watching this short little video here from the Sun Steno. We appreciate it. Uh, and we'll see you in this week's episode, which is coming soon. So keep your eyes out for that. Thank you. Please uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you in the future. Go Suns go. Regards. Go Suns go.